It's not just me, right? Morgan Stanley appeared to be on a Tesla AI-related research tear, publishing note after note after note. In case you missed it, they currently have a $310 price target on Tesla stock, and that's not predominantly driven, no pun intended, by their automotive business. Tesla and NVIDIA, the journey to AI supremacy. Tesla remains fiercely debated as it faces earnings pressure, and the business model crosses the chasm from automotive towards AI and robotics. By the way, can we, can we just take a moment to just let that sink in? Can you imagine somebody like had a time machine and pulled you forward? Let's just say it's like 15, 20 years ago. Somebody brings you into the future and you read this in your research from Wall Street discussing a quote automotive company crossing the chasm towards artificial intelligence and robotics. You'd think you're in another dimension. It's important to understand because today's current automotive companies will not be crossing this chasm. They will, however, be sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Anticipate the next six months to exhibit heightened volatility. Now, I don't know whether or not they'll be right, but Tesla has got to be one of the most volatile stocks of all time. It's even worse than your last girlfriend in terms of volatility. So if they're right, buckle up and hold on tight, motherfuckers. And I can understand where they're coming from here. You've got some folks panicking hard about short-term gross automotive margins, thinking it's the end of the world, no one wants electric vehicles, hybrids are the future, blah, 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 blah. Ridiculous, but there are people thinking that way. And on the other side, you also have people who are seeing what Tesla's doing in terms of AI and robotics. This tension between perceptions, the cyclical nature of the automotive industry, the surge in capabilities of AI, I mean, I think they're really onto something here. Now, I don't know whether or not the stock's going to remain volatile, but certainly we have the setup for extreme volatility. And volatile doesn't just mean down. Volatile means wild swings, like an unrestrained meat club. Though we continue to see short-term choppiness, we retain a positive long-term outlook. <laughs> By the way, the, fuck, the jargon on Wall Street's killing me, bro. They, 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 why, why did they use an acronym for long term? Holy shit. In the journey to AI supremacy, there are a number of attributes and gating factors that investors are increasingly locked in on. By the way, gating factor, just in case anyone doesn't know, they're talking about obstacles or remote, a barrier to replicating or copying or catching up and so on. Number one, funnily enough, data. The gating factor of gating factors when it comes to autonomy. And it is, of course, Tesla who has the unassailable data lead. Speaking of, by the way, time for a quick detour over to X. It's a great discussion happening right now. Some discussion and a poll today by Sawyer Merritt. A follow-up poll, by the way, we won't get into the history, but he asks, what should Tesla's monthly FSD subscription cost in the US? I've seen quite a bit of discussion on this today as I reposted. While many investors are discussing the cost of full self-driving, Tesla is busy increasing the value a full self-driving. These two things are not the same. Cost is what you pay and value is what you get in terms of the capabilities. As I followed up, both a lower price and or higher value will increase FSD take rates. Kind of obvious, right? Adam asked if I would be opposed to lowering the prices for FSD. As I mentioned, I don't care either way. As I said, obviously a lower price would increase the take rate. So too, greater capabilities. Also, both of those at the same time. But as I said, I don't care either way. Why? Once autonomy is solved, the discussion around the price of FSD and take rates over the short term will become entirely relevant. The reason is that once FSD enables robotaxis, the economics change in terms of what FSD is from a cool feature that Tesla's trying to price to a money printer, and FSD will be priced accordingly. If this software enables your vehicle to go out and bring you thousands, tens of thousands of dollars per year in passive profits while operating as a robotaxi on your behalf for you and you don't need to be there the market clearing price for that software is probably going to be pretty absurd how could i suggest this well geez let's think about this think about the hardest working uber driver or taxi driver on planet earth who barely sleeps works more than they're legally allowed to does a bit on the side sketchy but whatever they still need bathroom breaks and sleep and slightly maybe a life competing with a vehicle that can do the same thing yet doesn't need to be paid a salary an income an hourly rate, like the person driving your Uber. This is going to become batshit insane. I don't think people are really grasping this. Oh, hey, Future Steven here, recording this a day after what you just heard. And remember this post? Well, I get the feeling that Elon Musk may, in fact, agree with this sentiment. Once again, obvious things are obvious. But that's not the point of this interjection from Future Steven. This is for breaking from none other than Mr. Breaking News himself. Tesla has officially lowered the monthly FSD subscription price to $99 a month, which was... $199 a month previously. As I said earlier in this video, in the prior recording, obviously this will increase overall take rates. 
by how much? Impossible to know. But my gut feeling is that this is a sweet spot in terms of value for money, given what it currently can do. Psychologically, under $100 a month is very different from nearly $200 a month. Higher take rate, more data, winning. And just a final note before I get back to past Stephen, I actually discussed this, I was chatting to my dad last night about this. After some of these posts, I was discussing what I'd recorded, chatting about our days, and I'd noticed hours later after recording the video that Musk had liked a couple of posts from people discussing the $99 per month proposal, polls, etc. And I said to my old man, bro, this is the biggest hint you can possibly get. 99 bucks a month. It's got to be a done fucking deal right now. Big hint. And here we are. Another reason to pay attention, at least if you're on Tesla stock, to what Elon Musk is interacting with on X. Not sure any of the big institutional investors will have seen this one coming. But had they, depending on their estimates of take rates, that may have prompted some action on Tesla stock. I'll just leave it at that. Now, over to you past Stephen. So over the short term, plenty of discussion, like I said. Lower price means take rates go up. Duh. But once these things can act as robo-taxis, people are very quickly going to forget the discussion around short-term prices and take rates on FSD. I followed up on this too. I cannot stress enough how little of a fuck I give about anything that is not the awakening of the robo-taxis, which will make Tesla's entire business, in terms of its current financials, revenue, profits, etc., look like a rounding error. And Sawyer raises a very important point. Totally agree, by the way. The more people that use FSD, the more data Tesla gets to solve autonomy quicker. So lowering the cost will likely increase the amount of people that use it quite substantially once the free trial period is over. Completely agree with this as well. Once again, obvious things are obvious. So after that short detour regarding data, back to the note. Number one, data, a gating factor. Tesla recently achieved 1 billion miles traveled for its full self-driving service. Tesla's fleet drives more miles in five minutes than Apple's now cancelled autonomous fleet had reportedly driven in a year. By 2030, we estimate Tesla's global vehicle fleet will approach 40 million units in service, driving over 400 billion miles per year, over 1 billion miles per day, or nearly 13,000 miles per second. From our conversations with AI experts, such a monumental data set may be an advantage for machine learning and neural net training. I think they accidentally misspelled will and accidentally wrote may. Two. Another gating factor, compute. As noted in our deep dive on Tesla's in-house computing effort, Dojo, Tesla has predicted that they will reach 100 exaflops of compute by Q4 2024, up from around 4.5 exaflops as of Q3 2023. According to Tesla, that's the equivalent of around 300,000 A100 GPUs, which on our estimates would cost seven and a half to eight billion dollars. Whether the 100 exaflop goal becomes a reality by then or not, the company would either need to ramp up its in-house dojo compute capability or substantially increase purchases of NVIDIA GPU clusters, jump again here, or both. With this in mind, we found Morgan Stanley US Semiconductor Analyst, Joe Moore's channel, by the way, hilarious last name, given the industries he's covering. Channel checks on NVIDIA are quite insightful. So apparently this guy has some connections, right? Quote, We continue to hear reports of stronger demand outside of the traditional hyperscaler customers with notably robust demand from Tesla, aka the guys hearing on the grapevine that Tesla is buying an absolute fuck ton of NVIDIA GPUs for training AI. Strange thing to do, considering Tesla's just a car company, right? <laughs> and a wide range of sovereign customers, which remain difficult to triangulate and verify, but which by all accounts are a strong source of incremental demand. On our calculations from last year, we had encountered scenarios where Tesla could end up being among NVIDIA's very largest customers in the future. Once again, very strange thing to hear for just a car company to be possibly the biggest customer, if not one of the biggest customers, purchasing GPUs for training artificial intelligence for NVIDIA. At what point will the Yotta flop enter the collective consciousness? Three, energy, another gating factor. And they're not necessarily talking about Tesla's energy business, but one of the obstacles to replicating what Tesla's doing in terms of autonomy. Data, compute, and now energy. Our electricity, utility, and thematics team have been highlighting to investors the significant mismatch between the hyper-rapid growth in generative AI power needs, notwithstanding continued efficiency improvements, and the slow growth in power grid infrastructure. While there are many chapters left to play out, Tesla's access to large amounts of low-cost electricity may prove to be one of the most deterministic advantages in Tesla's growing AI portfolio, by the way. Remember when Musk talked a little while ago about Tesla over time having the world's largest distributed inference network in other words all the tesla vehicles in theory 
can train AI, can run AI. Imagine a point in the future where Tesla owners could opt in to allowing their vehicle to run some AI, e.g. some inquiries on Grok or who fucking knows, ChatGPT, which will use some energy in exchange for the owner getting a small amount of revenue passively. This is another potential option in the future that not many people are discussing. Just thought I'd mention that. We value Tesla Energy at $30 a share to Tesla, but this may not capture the strategic value of Tesla's fast-growing US renewable energy ecosystem. Tesla Energy and storage revenues were up 54% year over year in 2023. Everyone forgot about this, right? Because gross automotive margins. Four, path to monetization. Tesla's highly anticipated August 8th RoboTaxi Day may offer some important clues as to the ongoing business model shift and change of emphasis away from the increasingly oversupplied <laughs> EV industry. Oh boy. However, we anticipate it may be difficult for Tesla to convince investors of the ability to achieve commercial scale under a timeline relevant to most investors. I think they accidentally wrote investors instead of short-term gamblers and traders. As for the full self-driving campaign, we expect improvements here to be non-linear and difficult to predict. So if they're non-linear, would that not mean exponential? Morgan Stanley might be hinting at a potential hockey stick moment in terms of capabilities. While not claiming perfection, Tesla has described this upcoming FSD version as its chat GPT moment in terms of delivering a major step change improvement in performance of the system without labeling, without LiDAR and without HD maps. Having said that, we are concerned at the margin of the level of enthusiasm among some investors around the improvements of FSD B12. Now, I just got to take a break here to make sure everyone understands what's going on. It seems quite clear that FSD V12, on average, has not only matched, but has now exceeded past FSD in terms of capability in almost every situation. But the breakthrough isn't that it's a trillion times better, keyword better yet. The breakthrough is the architecture. This was achieved without 300,000 lines of explicit code and instructions, without heuristics. It was trained purely end-to-end -end on video of good human drivers. For this software to have achieved comparable capabilities to the previous system, without being told the rules of the road, what lane markers are, what to do, when oncoming traffic has a blinker on in a suburban street, should you drive around a puddle, should you brake? It hasn't been taught anything. It hasn't been told you need to stop at a red light, go at green. It hasn't been taught this stuff. It's figured it out. This is the breakthrough. It's important that this is not lost in the noise. The breakthrough here is how the software is doing what it's doing, not what it's doing. I know that sounds a bit confusing. The reason this matters, because prior to now, there are a lot of unknown unknowns in terms of the capabilities and progress in the future with FSD. They're just kind of bashing their head against the wall and brute forcing their way to better and better software versions. However, pure end-to-end -end video is a paradigm shift. And now, the author's note. I have used FSD regularly, most journeys, for nearly 18 months. I enjoy using it as it reduces the stress of driving on many journeys and am frequently impressed by its capability in navigating complex driving situations. However, in my own experience with the latest update of FSD Beta 12.3, in the New York area for the past week, I do not at this point notice any major improvements versus the prior version. So I'm glad I added that important context prior to these comments from the author because they matter. Now, I'm not hating on Adam here. I'm not sure if he understands the breakthrough isn't capabilities relative to the past version, although don't get me wrong, seeing some incredible stuff, but it's how Tesla got to that point. However, as he continues, that being said, this is just my own experience. And we have heard the improvement in FSD can be geography and road dependent. For example, it may be more of a step change in California. Accurate. In the end, we believe any improvements in FSD performance can and will be empirically measured through interventions, accident rates, and a host of other data. If the system truly is a chat GPT moment in safety, we believe Tesla would make every effort to communicate such important information to consumers, regulatory bodies, and the insurance industry, hopefully backed by third-party verification. We believe Tesla, an auto company, may be unusually well positioned in the first three of the above attributes, which were, in case you guys forgot, data, compute, and energy. Investors are struggling to see how the company can use its infrastructure and network to achieve a path to monetization. There are paths within transportation, over 10 trillion miles traveled annually, in the global automotive market. But FSD take rate and RoboTaxi may not move the needle significantly in the near term. While August 8th may be important to the stock, positive or negative, we are eager to hear about the next thing. So another day, another note on Tesla, RoboTaxi's autonomy, FSD. The narrative is starting to change, it's still early, but this is an important milestone to pay attention to in the future. Because once everyone figures out Tesla is an AI and robotics company, 
not just an automotive company, not just an energy company, but AI and robotics. Once people start to figure this out more broadly, they're probably going to act on this knowledge with their hard-earned cash. I'll just leave it there. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com SMR, you can get yourself a one-year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. For now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the link at the pinned comment, 
See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.